Hey, Hugh, good morning. Good to be back on with you. I want to cover two things with you, impeachment and uh, immigration. First, I know you believe a trial of former President Trump is unconstitutional. Is that the majority view of the Republican caucus? Hugh, I think uh, Senate Republicans are coming around to that view as they think more about it. Uh, I mean, I think for most Americans, it's just a very common sense position, though. I mean, um, the Democrats want to have a trial to convict and remove from office a man who left office yesterday. And by the time we get around to that trial in a few more days, that's going to be an even stranger proposition. Why are the Democrats spending the Senate's time in an obsessive inquest against a private citizen when we could be focused on what really matters, like getting more vaccines out to Americans or helping Americans get back to work or defending this country from the threats we face abroad. Uh, that's just the common sense view of things, Hugh. Now, I think the Constitution really couldn't be much plainer. It says that the president, the vice president, and civil officers of the United States shall be subject to impeachment, conviction, and removal from office. Um, Donald Trump is none of those things now. Um, and, and to put a punctuation mark on that, Hugh, the reports I'm hearing in the Senate is that the Democrats propose not to have John Roberts preside over this trial because the chief justice only presides over the trial against the president. And by if that's in fact their position, they are admitting that Donald Trump is no longer the president and therefore is not susceptible to impeachment proceedings. The whole thing, again, to me just shows how obsessive the Democrats and the media have become about Donald Trump over these last five years. Donald Trump may no longer live in the White House, but he is living rent-free in the heads of Democrats and the media. So if we are to be a party of the Constitution, I don't believe the Republicans have any other choice. Do you believe that the caucus will hold a vote on this position to get a sense of the caucus in your Thursday meeting? I don't know what we'll do inside uh, our caucus, Hugh. I would expect someone, uh, either um, former President Trump's lawyers or uh, Republican senator, if there is, in fact, a trial to at least uh, propose a motion to dismiss or a motion to table or, or some such motion on the simple grounds that the Senate has constitutional authority uh, to have impeachment proceedings against a sitting president, a sitting vice president, a civil officer of the United States, not a private citizen. So I, I would expect that. I also believe that President Trump uh, could bring an action in the 11th Circuit at a district court level to enjoin the proceedings as it would be. It's akin to trying to shut down a newspaper. It is simply not constitutional. And although you can find a few law professors who will argue the point, any American can read the document and come to this conclusion, Senator. Yeah, I mean, look, you can find some law professor nerd who would come up with far-fetched hypotheticals about thwarting the impeachment process by preventing a, a bar from uh, running for office again in the future. The founding fathers are not law professor nerds. They may have been lawyers, but they also farmers and they were merchants and they were fishermen and they understood the common sense view of the world that impeachment is a proceeding against a sitting officer to remove him from office. It, it just makes no sense to have impeachment proceedings against someone from left, who's left from office. It's like trying to divide by zero view. It just makes no sense at all. So, Senator, my second question is on immigration. I asked Peter Baker yesterday if the president's new proposal of an eight-year path to citizenship and stopping the wall was an opening bid or a bottom line. And he agreed with me that if it's a bottom line, it's dead on arrival. Do you agree with that? Well, I certainly hope so, and I'll do everything I can to make it so. But let's remember, Hugh, even if it's just an opening bid, there's an element of kabuki theater here. Um, Joe Biden may be expecting um, some willing Republican accomplices to swoop in at the last minute with a fig leaf of enforcement, like money for drones or something at the southern border, or some commission to study interior enforcement, hoping that he can peel off 10 Republicans. We should be anticipating um, that highly stylized gambit right now, and we should reject it out of hand right now. Republicans should not pass a, an amnesty first bill that puts an amnesty in place for 15 million illegal immigrants while also increasing guest workers uh, visas at a time when we still have 10 million people out of work. Um, the focus should be on getting Americans back to work and getting our border secure and enforcing immigration laws at the place of employment. This bill, by the way, is not just lacking in enforcement to you. It actually guts enforcement. It guts the E-Verify program that we already have in place that some states use on a mandatory basis that we should use nationwide. So Let me bill, ask it. Senator, very quickly, is it an absolute must-have, the completion of at least 700, and I would prefer 900 miles of wall of the sort that President Trump has built? 
Um, no, Hugh, I don't think the wall in itself is the only thing, or is a critical point that would get Senate Republicans to vote for an amnesty. Uh, because enforcement is about much more than just a wall. It's also about making E-Verify mandatory. It's also about not taking steps like President Biden took last night, which is eliminating the Remain in Mexico policy. So migrants can just show up at our border, make a fake claim for asylum, and come through the door. In the well, wall. I agree with that, but is it a necessary part of any deal? Because I'm not going to support any deal that does not have a wall in it, and I, I wonder if, I, yeah, if you I agree. Take- Yeah, I take your point, Hugh. It's necessary, but it's not sufficient. That's what I mean. I I agree. It's necessary, but not sufficient. And so I don't know why they would even proceed to a discussion. Do you, if the the wall is dead? No, we shouldn't proceed to a discussion of of the bill that's going to be focused on giving American jobs to foreign workers. Senator Ted Cotton, thank you, my friend. Ted Cotton. (laughs) Ted Cotton. I'm sorry, Tom Cotton. How many times have I talked to Tom Cotton? I'll be back tomorrow, America, on the next Hugh Hewitt Show. Thank God.